All right, we've had our fun with beta games, development of games, canceled games, strange gaming legends, and all that stuff. From the highs of Zelda and Mario to the low of... Ugh, Limbo of the frickin' Lost. But, what about games that don't even exist? Although, I don't really mean anything like a video game version of Shazam. I'm referring to games that have been advertised or mentioned in listings, but there is no game tied to them that exists at all. Or at least, no one seems to remember working on them. These games are very mysterious and intriguing, and although rare, examples of such games exist, including today's subject. It was a video game that made appearances in various game listings for upcoming NES games in the late 1980s, but not only went unreleased, but there's literally no factual evidence for its existence outside of these listings. What the hell is going on here? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Today on Bayo Quest, we will investigate the strange mystery of Yeah Yeah Beebus 1, I, I guess? That's how you pronounce it, right? I don't know. In the July 1989 listing for video game mail order service Play It Again, listings for upcoming NES games include a mysterious project called Yeah Yeah Beebus wrongly listed in an alphabetical list between Wrestlemania and Xenophobe. Just gonna let you know Y comes after X, uh, not W. The game would appear in Play It Again's listings from July until September of that year, when it would ultimately disappear. At the same time, the title would also appear in a listing for another mail order service, Funko, again wrongly listed between the W and X titles in an alphabetical list, appearing from October of 1989 until January of 1990. These listings would also appear in magazines such as Video Games and Computer Entertainment, which would advertise these services, further exposing the public to this weird little game. Eventually, and as said before, the game would disappear from listings of NES games altogether. And at the time, no one really bat an eye since the game really didn't get advertised at all, and there were hundreds of NES games to choose from. It was just another game that went unreleased. It happens, you know? This mysterious little game would fade into obscurity until the 21st century rolled in, when video game preservation and information became exponentially more valuable. The first mentions of Yeah Yeah Beebus would be on some gaming forums around the mid-2000s, who recalled the game listings and questioned if anyone ever heard of that strange little game. From these small posts, people began to try and look into Yeah Yeah Beebus, particularly game collectors and gaming historians, who wanted to collect and document every game they could for preservation and historical purposes. But something was amiss. There's literally nothing available about this game, and no one seems to remember what this game even was. There was no game under that title that existed in any other records. No company had their names attached to it. No information existed about the development. No prototypes, no footage, no commercials, no screenshots, no ads. Literally nothing existed besides these game listings. No one even knew anything about the game's premise or gameplay, aside from likely false memories of the game possibly being about nerds. This strange situation would ultimately spark debates as to what this game was supposed to be and whether or not the game existed, with many theories thrown around to figure out what this game was and what happened to it. All of these theories thrown around are equally plausible, with interviews from former employees of these mail order services strengthening some theories, but as of the recording of this video, no theory has been properly agreed upon among gamers and gaming historians, and even the interviews gave different accounts. 
The game was also subject to mock-ups and jokes, with many creating fake screenshots and title screens of the game as a goof or act of trolling against other gamers and gaming historians. But the question still lingered. What was Yeah Yeah Beebus? Many hoped that some crazy collector or developer had the game, or at least the source code of what could be Yeah Yeah Beebus. But as of this video, no such game ever surfaced. So, what was the game? One of the likely theories thrown around is that the game was a type of copyright trap, meant to catch other game services trying to copy others' listings. Considering that the game's earliest mention was in the July 1989 Play It Again listings, many believe that this could be the most likely explanation to what this game was, as Funko didn't list the game until October of that year. Not to mention, it is generally believed that Funko did copy Play It Again's its listings, due to major similarities between the two, and of course, Yeah Yeah Beebus' inclusion. A slightly modified theory suggests that Play It Again never really bothered doing anything against Funko over the fake game, because suing over this copyright trap would be too much to bother, so felt it would be better to just screw over those who copied their list. This is supported by the listing on Play It Again having a line where they will give a 10% discount to a game they couldn't fulfill, while Funko only had a disclaimer for legal protection, meaning anyone who pre-ordered that game would have been upset with Funko, while Play It Again would have a somewhat okay customer. Some believe that the game's inconsistent listings lessen the credibility of this theory, since it would make more sense for a copyright trap to be used for much longer than just 4 months. Another likely theory is that the game's listing was likely a fake placeholder to fill in a blank spot in the reserve section, or maybe even as an inside joke from the people making the listings, which can happen which seems reckless of these companies, but I, it, it can happen. But if it was a joke, we'll never really understand what that joke meant since this was a listing from over 30 years ago as of this video. Perhaps it was a mistake? This is another common theory about Yeah Yeah Beavis that it was an accidental listing for a game that didn't exist. But then again, the title should have been immediately removed if this were the case, and it will be reckless for the companies involved to keep it in for four months. But I mean, stranger things have happened before, so who knows, really. However, the other popular theory next to the game being a copyright trap is that the game did in fact exist, but was actually either a mistranslation, alternate name, early title, or code for another game most likely some sort of import title or unreleased game. Evidence includes the fact that several games in the listings are actually international titles, such as the game Dragon Ninja, which is the Japanese version of the game Bad Dudes, which also appears in the listing and were also released in 1989, so import titles aren't out of the ordinary. The listings also include several international games that were never released in the USA, such as Battlefield Napoleon, a misspelled translation of Napoleon Senki, as well as the also unreleased import game Chesterfield. So import games that never got imported are not out of the picture too. Strange titles for games that at least at first glance don't seem to exist are also present on the list, such as Terra Cresta, I think that's how you pronounce it, which could be Terra Cresta, Hulk Hogan, which could be WrestleMania, and Hector Vector, that could either be Star Hector or Stack Up, which adds to this theory. However, even determining what the potential game was is subject to debate as there are several candidates for the true nature of this possible game. Many threw around the idea that the game was an alternate title or mistitle 
for a bootleg game or some very obscure game, like some imported Japanese baseball game or something. Some believe that the title is a mistitling of a cancelled late 1980s Game Boy game from Vic Tokai called The Weavers, which was mistakenly listed as an NES game on occasion. And the name Dweebers sounds similar to Beavis, and that slightly believed premise about Beavis being about nerds was similar to the nerdy premise of Dweebers. So a mistitling of Dweebers as Yeah Yeah Beavis was considered, and the lack of evidence for the game's existence came from minimal advertisement and this mistitling. Another theory stems from the user Luigi Master on Nintendo Age in 2012, who looked up the romanization for the Japanese characters Bibei Su since it sounded like Bibis, and this was translated to the Bib or Bibe in Google Translate. But Google thought that he was trying to look up the American explorer and naturalist Charles. Bebay, I think that's how you pronounce that name. From this, it was believed that Yeah Yeah Bebis was something like Bebay 1 or 2, with the Roman numerals being a typo, and perhaps a type of explorer game, leading to some believe that this game was a mistitling for Sunsoft's Atlantis no Nazo, which was in the process of being localized into a Doki Doki panicked sequel to Activision's Super Pitfall as Super Pitfall 2, before being cancelled when they came to their senses too early for anyone to bother with advertisements or anything. This theory tends to be accepted since it's such an old listing and Japanese titles can often be given weird alternative names, but why wouldn't Funko and or Play It Again just use Super Pitfall 2? Or if they want to use the Japanese names, how do you get Yeah Yeah Bebis 1 from Atlantis no Nazo? However, the most popular theory out of all the theories at this point, and actually was generally accepted by the gaming consensus for a while, is that Yeah Yeah Bebis is in fact a mistranslation or early rough translation for a western release of the 1989 Bandai game Rai Rai Kionshi, I think. Baby Kionshi no Amida Daiboken. I don't know if I got that right. An entry in Bandai's Family Trainer series developed for the Power Pad and partially inspired by the 1980s Taiwanese horror comedy, Hello Dracula. It is believed that because the Power Pad was a decent seller with all the other Bandai Family Trainer games released in the United States, Play It Again assumed that Baby Kianchi was going to be localized as well and to prepare the game for a possible Western release, the mail order company threw together a translation to have it in their listings available for reservation. However, in the process, the translation got badly corrupted and the Rai Rai was translated as Yeah Yeah and they put together with Baby, directly translated, albeit badly, from the Japanese characters as Bebis. The way the Japanese characters for Baby could be romanized have two Y's in the word, so this could explain why some listings give it the name Yeah Yeah Bebis 1 since the translator used one I and used the other as a numeral title thing. However, said Western release was ultimately cancelled or just never really got bothered with, which would explain virtually no evidence for the game's existence under this title. At least, all of that is what the theory says. It most it probably didn't happen, but it could have. That's what the theory is. Once baby Kionshi was discovered and tossed around, it seemed like the mystery was solved. The hypothesis for the game was generally accepted by gamers, despite no hard evidence for the listing being about a localized baby Kionshi. Following that, Many people just moved on from Yeah Yeah Beavis and looked towards other subjects. 
Sure, some talked about it, and there was a Kotaku article written about the subject, but that seemed to be it. Until March 2021, when a Lost Media Wiki user, That Gaming Asshole, suggested that the game was likely a modified title for the game Yo Noid, a game based on Domino's old pizza mascot that gained notoriety for being the subject of a hostage crisis with a deranged man with the same last name as the mascot. That's a story for another day, by the way. The user suggested that translators unfamiliar with the mascot misheard the title and because pizza was involved, they included the word pizza but mistranslated it as Beavis and yo as yeah yeah and the exclamation mark became one. This theory wasn't generally accepted by the gaming consensus but it reignited the search for Yeah Yeah Beebus once again, this time even more thorough and detailed than ever before. Following a series of even more suggestions of video games that the listing could be referring to, Lost Media Wiki decided to try and come to a definite conclusion by tracking down former employees from both Funko and Play It Again from the late 1980s and early 1990s. The search turned up old employee tapes from Funko, to which the uploader, user, and former Funko employee Douglas Brown directed them to Andy McNamara. I, McNamara? Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. A game and former editor and chief who worked at the company. An interview with McNamara, I'll just say that, revealed that company owner David Holmage, things I pronounce it, put together these listings by looking at the market for games to acquire and would later have them complied with buyers. From this interview, it could be determined that this look at the market approach was used to create these listings, but the process was very slipshod and error prone, hence all these major mistakes being present in the listings. On the play it again side of things, Contact was made with founder of Play It Again, Neil Levin, who revealed that the owner, Rob Schwartz, did in fact use copyright traps, which added credibility to the copyright trap theory, despite evidence against it, and could be seen as more evidence of Funko borrowing the listing from Play It Again. It could also explain the inclusion of all the duplicate names for games and other strange names, since a true game seller should be able to tell that these weird names are wrong or don't really exist. Regardless, as of this video, the search remains ongoing, with new leads being hunted down in hopes of figuring out what this mysterious little game could have been. Holy shit guys, I was just looking through the uh, subject matter here, just to um, double check some things. And I came across Yeah Yeah Beepus 2, which just came out? <laughs> Whoa. That's, uh, that's the first time this happened to me, man. Um, yeah, maybe we should uh, go check it out. It um, doesn't look bad. It looks pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I'll uh, give it a look someday. But that was the mystery of Yeah Yeah Beebus. It's funny how such a strange little title in a listing for upcoming NES games could be so heavily talked about and debated after nearly 30 years, especially since the listings also had strange names that don't seem to be tied to other games as well. Perhaps the game's bizarre name is what caught people's attention, and the fact that the bizarre name wasn't tied to any known game really got people's interest in trying to solve this unusual gaming mystery. You know, I, I think that is what happened. I, I think that, that that happened. Will we ever find out what happened to uh, Yeah Yeah Beebus, or what this game was, or any of those questions? Probably, considering that we could kind of determine what the other weird games were on that listing. I'm sure we could find this one. Maybe we already did find truth, but we can't accept it for whatever reason. The baby Kionshi believe seemed to be the most likely answer, and many have said that it 
was at one point, but I guess it just wasn't satisfactory enough. Okay. I, I know why. We just need that proof to just get closure on this mystery. And I can't blame them. It's fun to do this stuff. Like, you just need to solve this. It's just, oh, I must solve this mystery, man. Just need to. But in a way, it'll be sad when we do find out the truth of this mystery, since it's another wild adventure that ends. Because, you know, the journey is often the best part of the adventure. Regardless, this is Case Steel Bay Quest signing out. I will see you all later. This was a Cobalt Steel video by MS Bernie. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Until next time, see you all later.